So this is an idea I got off of uh, YouTube. Um, I did a little bit different method for it, uh, but this is basically a, a joining jig for me. It's, it's a way for me to take a board that may have a little bit of wander and make a fairly true side to it. Uh, so what I did, this uh, blue track and these clips, I got these off of Amazon. Um, there is basically T-Track. I bought a piece of that PVC trim board. You can see there's kind of a texture to it. So I put the smooth side down, but the PVC trim board, because they kind of machine roll it, it has a very, very true edge. Uh, and, it's, and it's nice because it slides real easy. Uh, so I made this and I usually use one by in it and I can run one by through and I can get a real straight edge on it. Uh, but today this was thicker and so I had to use a piece of plywood in the back uh, just to kind of catch the clamps. I don't know if you can see that. I'll zoom in. So you can see where the clamp is just sitting on a piece of two inch material. So if you're gonna make one, maybe give yourself a little offset so don't put it right back at the back edge. Normally you need it anyways because those uh, little rubber feet are gonna sit on that white plastic, but in this case, uh, you might have to put a shim in there. So this is about, I think it's about an inch and three quarter thick, uh, these, these uh, pine boards that I'm doing. So I've already planed them down and now I'm just trying to put fairly good edges on them. Uh, I'm not looking for perfection. I am gonna join them together um, with dowels and everything, but uh, just for right now, if I can get them really close, uh, I'm gonna actually try my hand at, at hand planing the edges. Uh, I, should, I shouldn't say hand planing. Electric planing with the hand planer, uh, just to take a little bit of the wander of the blade off uh, of, a, of a table saw. as You're kind of feeding through if you wiggle it at all. It's going to put a, a little gap in it. So I'll just come back with a, a plane uh, or planer and take it off. And But this is a great way to, to create a kind of a real true edge and then you just flip it over. Now you've got a good straight edge to work from. Flip it over, run it back through and, and come up with kind of your width. So uh, that's what I'm doing for, for all these tops. Uh, these are tabletop. This is going to be a tabletop for a standing desk. So I ran the the faces through the planer, uh, the big planer, the surface planer, and uh, it does a pretty good job of taking all the saw marks out. I still have a lot of sanding to do there, but we take the, I take them through and I square off the edges with the table saw. The table saw leaves, I don't know if you can hopefully see it, but the table saw will leave the saw, the blade will leave just tiny little, uh, I don't know what you call them, just the, the cuts, right? The where the teeth of the blade go through, they leave a little bit of, uh, you know, texture on there. And so I take the plane, I take the hand plane, and I plane off those, and then I sand them smooth. And when they're all done, I hope to end up with something that looks about like that. So no more, no more saw marks. Uh, these will get a few more. That's about an 80 grit that I took uh, just to get all the 
to get it smooth, I'll move it from an 80 grit up to about a thousand grit, and that should uh, polish the wood up pretty good. So I'll get to playing in the next one. And so now we're fitting, I'm gonna fit the next one. I'm gonna do it, these are gonna be, all four of these are gonna go together into one big top eventually, but I can actually still feed this through my planer uh, at, these are about, let's see what we got here. They're only about 11 and a half a piece. Uh, the other one I think is 12 and a half or something like that to come out to almost a 20 something inch top. Uh, but I can still run an 11, I can run up to a 20 inch. Uh, you probably run reasonably about an 18 inch one. So I'm gonna put two of them together. And the reason for that is as much as I tried to get these perfect, they're not perfect. Um, and so when I uh, dowel them together and, and glue them and everything, I'll actually be able to run this through that as well. And it should, I think just one pass will even out any of the imperfections that are in these tops. And then I can just sand the rest of it out. But to, we put them on our table saw jig uh, or our guide to get them really close. But what happens is this angle is not always exactly perfect. And so what I can do is lay it flat on a table and I can rock this piece. I'm probably too shaky to show you that. But maybe I can show you how I can rock it and I can close up that gap. So what I'm doing is taking these pieces that's a that's uh, basically going to assume that it's probably not perfectly square. And you actually see that. Uh, sorry, can't do two things at once. You can actually see it. There's a very tiny gap right here in between this square. So we know that we're a little bit heavy on this side and a little bit low on this side. Same thing on the other one. So what I do is I take this and I take my plane and I just barely offset the the iron on it uh, to go a little heavy on this edge. So it's going to take a little bit out of that. You do that by adjusting this rear knob back here. So you do that until it's kind of shaving more on this side and less on the other side. And that's going to take that and hopefully square that out. I do that on that piece and that piece until they fit and they don't rock anymore. And then I'll use a, a dowel jig and I'll show you when I get to that step, I'll try to film that. But it's a real simple thing, they're, they're pretty cheap. Uh, and you just need like a 3 8 three eighths dowels or I uh, forget what it does, 3 8 5 16 and quarter inch dowels. Uh, it'll do and it just clamps onto the side of the piece here. Uh, and you drill the hole and put the dowels in. And, and, uh, and I would recommend, you can make dowels, but I actually ended up buying them because I like the fluting that's on these dowels. So that allows the glue to kind of go into those crevices and cracks, nooks and crannies, and it'll help these kind of slide in a little bit better, but also have glue all the way around them. Uh, these are pretty cheap too, uh, at Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever. Uh, but we'll go through, I'll plane these out, get the, uh, get the edges perfect. It's basically a trial and error process. And once that looks good, we'll uh, drill our dowel holes. All right, so just a couple of passes. You can see it's starting to tighten up that joint. And when I try to rock it now, let's see, where am I? I can't really rock them closed anymore. Uh, that for me is about what you're partly seeing as shadow, uh, but that's, that's about uh, acceptable for me for tolerances. Uh, once you glue them together, uh, let's see, sorry. Once you glue these together, that they look about like that, uh, I'll be happy. So, do you have your the joint that you think looks really good? Kind of line up and orient your grain, whatever you want. I decided to offset these two knots. It's not a true book match. These two pieces are not subsequent in the log or anything like that. Uh, but I thought it looked kind of cool, uh, so I just kind of put those together like that. Otherwise, it, it it seemed a little bit out of place to have the the knot go against something that was like clean grain. So that's just personal preference. There's nothing scientific or anything about that. Uh, but the next thing you wanna do is for that uh, dowel jig, you want to put down uh, a straight edge and you wanna scribe a line across these two on the tops. And what that's gonna do is allow on the jig itself, they have these alignment, these, uh, and that's gonna help you 
align it to that line and make sure that your dowels are gonna match up. So that's what we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna describe those lines uh, and then I'll show you the next step. Now, because personally I like to idiot proof things, uh, I draw a, an arrow on the tops. These are the two faces that will get joined. And what it does is it allows, you'll see that this, uh, since that is gonna line up here, but in this case, it's gonna put that dowel in the top half of that. And so if you, if, uh, you didn't, if you got this the wrong way, you'd put the dowel, it'd be completely offset. So it's a good way just to, for me, insurance policy. I mean, if you only had the line on the one side, uh, but if you wanted to, you could, let's say you wanted to offset these dowels. And so on one of them, you wanted to put it on the top half. The next one, you put it on the, the uh, bottom half or something like that. Then you would scribe your lines on the right sides, and then you could draw your arrow that way. Looking down at the top of the piece, you knew which way to orient your dowel jig. Now we're clamping up the top. Uh, this one I kind of just got heads down and did work, but um, I put uh, put the dowels in. I'll try to film the next one of doing that. So put dowels in and I uh, planed and fit the edges. I don't know about everybody else. I like to alternate the clamps. Seems kind of weird to do, but I feel like they do a better job sometimes of clamping on the side that the bar is on and less so on this side, especially in my case since I have Harbor Freight clamps. Nothing wrong with Harbor Freight, but they're Harbor Freight clamps. So I alternate them. So if this guy is kind of pulling it this way, this one will hopefully offset that by trying to pull it the other direction. These are thick enough and the edges are clean enough that I think that it'll, it'll be all right, but just kind of do it as a precaution. My desk is nearing completion. Uh, it didn't turn out the way that I planned for it to turn out, but I had to weigh perfectionism against time. I sort of ran out of time, uh, so I just sprayed another coat of just the water-based polycrylic. Uh, real quick, I've been just trying to knock these out coats in the evenings, uh, so there's another coat drying on this. Uh, in between, I sand it with about a 3000 uh, grit. That just takes the, sh the shine off of it. I did spray it with a like, clear matte uh, finish. I have the top and the base still separate from each other. Uh, I just chamfered the, the corners. I tried to smooth everything out best I could. Uh, this guy will dry. This stuff dries pretty quick, so it'll dry at least enough for me to handle it. Move it in, and uh, as it dries, I'll, I'll look to mount it on the top. Uh, that's about how it's turned out so far. You can kind of see a little bit of the shine, but that's because it's still wet. That gloss will go away as it dries. It'll just have a matte finish. Um, the things that I would do different are worth mentioning. Uh, there were just a few things that I I came back and I planed the surface. I had tear out in the grain when I would plane it. I just need to get better about reading uh, the grain, adjusting the plane when I would hand plane. And so while hand planing, I would get tear out. And so I came back with the uh, hand power planer and took an, about another layer off of it just to even out those uh, but I don't know. I left the ones on the bottom, but it's wet, so I don't want to lift it up. Uh, the other thing I did, I didn't really mess with these cracks. I just ended up leaving them. Uh, they soaked up the, the stain. I used a brown mahogany stain. Uh, it's a little bit different than a red mahogany. It doesn't have that dark, rich red color, but it does have a, uh, almost, it's about a middle between a, um, like a, a colonial or early American has a little bit more brownish to it. This is about a you split the difference between about an American 
colonial, I think it is, uh, and a red mahogany comes out somewhere here in the brown mahogany. So I like the color. Uh, the other things I would do different, I actually wouldn't use the orbital sander again. It just left a lot of sanding marks that were difficult to get back out of it. I think from now on when I really want a nice finish on a piece of furniture, I'll move up through the sandpaper grits uh, with, you know, by hand. And so there's a lot of, uh, just as I tried to take imperfections out, I didn't notice them until I stained it, but you can see some of the scratches. Uh, and I think a lot of that was just a piece of sandpaper that was in there that had one almost errant uh, grain on it would just dig in a lot more than the rest of them. So even though I moved down in grit to 200 uh, all the way into the thousands, it uh, didn't matter. It still left some of those gouges. I couldn't see that in the wood until the stain hit it and the stain really lift those out. Overall, this was a learning piece anyways. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to have learned it. I'm happy to share the things that I learned. Uh, I think that the joining turned out really well. Uh, I, you know, it's really difficult to see where I put the two, where they put the joints together. You know, there's technically four pieces of wood here. Uh, I left the ends. I was going to do something fancy with the end. I en ended up not doing that. Um, but you can really see in the end the different pieces of wood that I used. Uh, again, that kind of gives you an indication of this one. You could still see the pith is centered in it, uh, but it had a wavy pith. And so you can still see the little dots. The dots are characteristic of that that sort of center wood and you can tell that's right where it cracked where those cracked develop cracks developed I liked these pieces better these split the the pith would have been on the bottom and so those those imperfections I could bury under this top uh, whereas the ones where I split the middles uh, I can't do that and so I actually I milled a lot more wood this way I'll probably stop doing that I'll probably now mill a lot of it where I split uh, the pith right down the middle because I liked uh, how that turned out, how I was able to take that. Uh, this wood seemed so much more stable. The grain worked out so much better. I don't have any cracks. I don't have any imperfections. I have real consistent grain. Uh, so where I can, I think I'll try to focus and make sure that I center the pith and as I mill, I keep that pith. Uh, this one, you can almost see this one. I didn't, I centered it. it. On the other side, the pith is in the bottom. But on this one, the pith is in the middle. I probably didn't level the pith. And so I need to level the pith better. Uh, that'll turn out, I think, a lot better grain. So all of these things, just uh, things that I've learned, having a chance to actually use some of the wood that I milled, I think this is gonna change how I mill things. Well, that's enough rambling, uh, but this is about going to do it for this desk. Uh, I didn't take a lot of film. I tried to knock these out in the evenings, uh, and I apologize for that. But at least I wanted to share with you the things that I learned. Uh, you can see those things in the wood. You can see them in the project. Uh, and I think that that's, it, it was a learning experience for me, and I definitely wanted to share those learnings with you. Well, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, and uh, hope to see you guys again soon.